Okay, we're going to learn about vectors, and in particular, we're going to learn about the C++ vector class. One important feature of this class is that it is a container class. It is also a random access. And it's also a template class. So let me explain what I mean by these things. So, so far we, we've studied quite a bit about how to store information about single objects. So we have a time class, we have a date class, we have an event class. If we have an event, um, Maybe we use a string for its name. Maybe we use a string for its location. And of course, events have dates and times, start time, end time. So we could use date and time for um, you know, the start time, for example, and things of that nature. But we're still only storing information about one event. If I have a student, for example, or if I have a grade, students can have grades, but I'm still storing information about only one grade and one student. So what we need to do is we need to be able to store collections of objects. And that's what a container class does. A container class stores collections of objects. And we can certainly write our own container classes. And in fact, in some of the following courses, you spend a lot of time learning about different ways of storing information and implementing those. We're going to start by using one that's already provided for us in the standard library, and it's the C++ vector class. And it's random access in that I can access any of the elements of the vector at any time. Now this is in contrast to a sequential access. And you'll see that in the next set of lectures where we're building a linked list. A linked list is a sequential access container and in order to access the second element of the container you have to first access the first one. And this will be uh, come a little more clear after you have some experience. And finally this is a template class and in C++ a template class is a way to make containers store any object. So with a vector we could store a collection of times, a collection of dates, a collection of events. And the nice thing about template classes is we only have to implement one vector and we can store any object in it. And this might not seem all that uh, revolutionary to you but it is a more recent modern innovation and it's actually led to uh, an entire paragraph, a paradigm called generic programming. And Java also has a mechanism for building uh, container classes that can store any object. So th this is actually a pretty modern um, innovation. Now usually we don't cover template classes until the second semester, but you can certainly learn how to use vectors. Now in order to use vectors you have to include uh, the vector library. So if some of the things that I'm describing doesn't work, then just make sure that you're including the correct library when you use these things. And the basic idea behind a vector is that 
you know, you have a collection. And really the vector is divided into two parts. You kind of have the location um, and then you have the contents. And the locations are simply numbered starting at zero and one and two and you know it depends on how many things we're actually storing in our vector but it's up to now this vector will have some size so this location here is size minus one and the reason it's size minus one is because we start at zero and then in each location we can store some sort of object so for example this could be uh, my first grade that I get on a test. This could be the second grade that I get for an assignment. Okay, and so on and so forth. And I can store, maybe I did well on the last assignment. And I can store all of my grades in this vector. And so you can see that I have a collection of these integers, a collection of these grades and we'll look at the public interface of the vector class but essentially what I can do is I can refer to any element of this vector by simply specifying its location and I can get access to 86. And as you can imagine since I can refer to these locations using integers actually they're unsigned integers and they're very convenient for processing with for loops and so we'll, we'll take a look at that also. So let's look at how we would go about declaring a vector of some type. 